I want people to fall in love of this city as much as I'm in love with. But we can't have a move here. Hi, I'm Rick and welcome back to Sweet Heat. This is a show that's all about my two favorite flavor combinations, sweet and heat. Everything I make on this show is gonna have a component of, uh, you know, a little bit sweet and a little bit spicy, just like me. Today, because it's a little bit close to Thanksgiving, I'm gonna make you a sweet heat Thanksgiving stuffing. I'm gonna be using pan de lote, which is a traditional Mexican sweet bread. Uh, but of course, I'm gonna add some serranos and some really delicious Sinaloan uh, chorizo, which will kind of give it that sweet heat combo. One of the things that I'm gonna do to add a little bit of contrast is, with the, uh, the fresh sweet corn is I'm gonna be using totopos, which are fried corn tortilla strips. They have this really nice nutty corn flavor and I think it's gonna pair well and I think it's gonna pull the sweet panelote back into savory land. And since this is for a traditional American Thanksgiving table, I want a few flavor cues for an American Thanksgiving. So I found some beautiful thyme and some sage. I've also got celery. So those flavors will actually remind you of the Thanksgiving table, even though we're using almost exclusively Mexican ingredients. And as always, please like and subscribe if you like the video, if you like me, and if you wanna see more, I will be back once every two weeks or twice a month, and I will be bringing you others of my favorite recipes from Mazatlan, Mexico. They have this really weird, funny commercial uh -huh. where there's this family and they're like trying to decide what they're having for breakfast but the mom she's pregnant and it zooms in and there's a picture of, of a fetus <laughs> and the fetus says Quiero chorizo colis. <laughs> <laughs> and then the mom is like um, I'm craving chorizo and then they have chorizo oh for my breakfast. God. <laughs> it's so it's funny. Hilarious. Yes. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna do is trim the ends off my onion. I don't need them to be like super finely chopped because it's a dressing and everything is gonna be kind of mixed in together. All right, that is one large white onion. I am using two really beautiful poblano peppers. I really love the flavor of poblanos and you know, I loved them before I got to Mexico, but I just use them almost exclusively as my pepper of choice. I just think they're super flavorful. And the peppers add a little bit of sweetness as well. I'm not gonna, I don't really wanna add too much more sweetness because the, uh, the pan de elote is like really sweet already. So everything that I'm doing in this dish is really to compensate for the sweetness and pull it out of sweet territory and into the more of the savory territory. Okay, celery. I am gonna use four stalks of celery. I don't need them to be super small, probably around the same size as the peppers and the onions. And then just line everybody up and chop. Garlic now, okay. So I've got four very large cloves of garlic. And I'm just gonna microplane this into my ingredients. That is that, okay. So I'm gonna use chili serrano because I really just like the flavor. Jalapenos tend to have a much stronger, more vegetal flavor. Serranos are a little bit sharper and crisper, and I think they pair well with the poblanos. And typically they have a little bit more heat, or at least here I've found that they have a little more heat than the jalapeno. And I'm gonna keep the, uh, the seeds in. If you have an aversion to heat, um, then you should definitely take the seeds out. And I will show you the easiest way to do that. You just cut the, just in half lengthwise, take your spoon, start at the top, and then just scrape down. Okay, so I found some beautiful fresh thyme, and I'm just gonna strip the leaves. It's funny because now this, the, the sage and the thyme are actually starting to remind me of Thanksgiving. It's so strange here because even though it's, close to November and Thanksgiving. It's very hot here. It's still like in the 90s. So I'm still running around in my swimsuit and tank top. Okay, and then this is the sage. It's really, really beautiful. Oh. So with these, you do need to find, chop them a little bit more fine because it's actually a little bit unpleasant to eat a big piece of sage leaf. So I usually just like kind of roll them up together and then just give a fine little chop. 
Ooh, that smells so good. Yeah, all right. That is all of my veg. Okay. So this is the pan de lote. It's so good. I went to the panaderia, which is a bakery here in Mexico. I got there at 10. They had just come out of the oven and she didn't even want to sell them to me because she's like, if I give them to you, they're going to stick together. And she's like, you have to promise me that you will not eat them until like they've rested and cooled for at least an hour and a half. And I was like, sure, fine. They were so incredibly delicious. I might have eaten one in the car, but whatever. I took um, about three pounds of this, which is about 15 cups, and just broke them up into little pieces. It's about like an inch big. And I laid it out on a sheet tray and I let it sit out overnight, um, just put it in the oven and um, oven off just to let them dry out a little bit. And then this morning, I put it in a 325 degree oven and toasted it for about 40 minutes. So now, I wanted to dehydrate um, and get some of the moisture out because like I said, it was very, very moist yesterday when I bought them. And I want them to soak up all of the really savory flavors. So I'm gonna add some turkey stock and then all of the, uh, the herbs and the vegetables. And I want them to absorb not only the flavor, but some of the salt as well, so they won't read quite as sweet. And now I think we are ready to start cooking. Get her ready for this. So the first thing that we're gonna do over here is start cooking the chorizo. I'm not gonna do it all at once because if I dropped everything in there right now, it would basically just steam and what I want is to build flavor. And so the way that you build flavor is you need to brown the meat. So to do that, we're gonna do it in batches. I'm using lard. I am only using half a cup, which for Thanksgiving for me is not that much, but this manteca is really rich and it's also very flavorful. And so I don't want you to taste this stuff and go, oh my God, this tastes like a chicharron, which it probably would if I used a lot more. And in goes half of my chorizo. And I'm just gonna break this up with the spoon. Do you want some water? No, when we finish. Okay. I'm from the desert. <laughs> I'm basically a stuffing. No, you're a burro. A what? A burro. Nothing bad with burro. Hardworking, loyal animal. That's why I like you. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you like a burro. <laughs> what being a burro means. All right, that is done. I'm gonna try and keep as much of the fat in there as possible. I'm not cooking this, the chorizo all the way through because it's gonna continue to bake in the oven. And the main thing that I want is just some nice browning. I'm gonna add a little bit more manteca because, you know, manteca. And I'm gonna put the rest of the chorizo in there. Same thing, just break it up. Okay. All right put everything in the big bowl. Basically this big bowl is going to be my landing pad for everything that we're cooking over here. And at the end, we will mix everything together in that. Same skillet, put the rest of my manteca. And now we're gonna cook the veg. So now I'm going to season the vegetables. Whenever I'm sauteing vegetables, I always season. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of salt. The reason why I like to do it now is because the salt's gonna draw out a lot of the sugars and a lot of the, the juices that are in the vegetables. They'll help them cook a little bit more quickly and a little bit more evenly. With all that sugar, you'll get a little bit more caramelization, a little bit more flavor development. Can you do that chef thingy what you're doing? Yeah, that's pretty impressive. So normally at this point, I would probably deglaze the pan with wine. Um, and you know, I thought about it and I was going to do it, except that uh, there are a lot of, the reason why you would use a wine to deglaze is because you wanna add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of acidity. There's a lot of sweetness in the cornbread or the panelote, and there's a lot of acidity in the chorizo. So I don't actually need to add any of that. So I'm actually just gonna deglaze with a little bit of my turkey stock. It's about a half a cup. And all I wanna do is just pull up all the yummy brown bits off the bottom of the pan. So while that is evaporating down, I'm going to add my little secret ingredient, which are the to totopos. So I'm going to just crumble them. 
These are cut into strips and it doesn't matter if you get corn chips and they're in the triangle shapes, just same thing, break them up. I just don't want there to be any big pieces of the totopos because they're there to add little bits of flavor. And I'm gonna add the herbs. And that's it. All I'm doing is really just blooming the herbs. I want them to release their flavor and, to, and their essential oils. I don't want to cook them that much because the pan is really hot. And if I let them sit here too long, they'll start to lose their flavor. I just wanna open them up ever so slightly and grab my big bowl of chorizo. Now everything is coming together. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, so I'm just gonna toss everything together and I'm gonna give a little taste to make sure that the seasoning is right. No, no, I thought you were gonna shoot it. No, I'm not, I'm not feeding you. Mmm, mmm, it's really good. It is very salty, but that's because I have three pounds of pan de lote that it needs to completely season. <laughs> I got a 13 by nine baking dish. Um, it's three quarts. I'm just going to use a little bit more lard. <laughs> you kind of don't really need to do this. Uh, it's, it's not gonna stick to your pan, um, but it will, if you were using butter or if you were using schmaltz or this lard, you're gonna get a little nice crispy crust um, with that all of that pork flavor. Okay, so that is ready to go. Now I'm adding eggs. Um, I've had multiple discussions with my friends, other chefs and cooks about the use of eggs in dressing. Um, I think that it's important because you need a binder, but I think that there's a line that you cross over from stuffing into bread pudding. And I really, 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 I love bread pudding, but I really, really, really don't like eating savory bread pudding for Thanksgiving. So I want the eggs to serve a function. I don't want to really be aware of their presence. So I'm just gonna whisk these up and then I'm gonna pour in my stock. This is three and a half cups of turkey stock or you can use chicken stock. All right, now I've got my big bowl of everything and I'm gonna add all of my toasty panelote. They smell so good. All the smells right now. Oh, this is what I love about Thanksgiving. It's like there are so many things cooking and so many amazingly delicious smells. The pie, the turkey, the stuffing the cranberries, the green beans, the potatoes, the gravy. Oh, my mom used to make the most incredible gravy. I always used to tell her, whenever you think you've made enough gravy, double it because it's never enough. Okay, so I'm gonna toss these together and just try and get everything incorporated. Now we're just gonna pour this in. I'm gonna go ahead and add everything. Oh, so excited. <laughs> my mountain of dishes that I get to do a little bit later. Fun, fun. Okay, now I'm just gonna go in from the bottom and then just pull up and try and be really careful that I'm not breaking up the bun. The colors are really incredible. Actually, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes just so that everything can kind of absorb and soften up. Then I'm gonna give it a taste. And I know that maybe some people are freaked out by raw eggs, that's totally fine. I'm not, so I'm gonna taste it. To me, it's really important that this is well seasoned because there are so many things in there and if you don't have enough salt, you won't be able to taste it. And you've gone through all of this effort. And so that's why I give a measured amount of salt in the recipe so that you can get that as perfectly seasoned as possible, but just as a, a, an insurance, I'm gonna taste it again. But this time with a piece of the bun, just to make sure that all the flavors are working. Mm. Mm hmm. Yep. 
Wow, I'm so good. <laughs> it's like, even, even unbaked, it's still got that sweet heat kick. Love it. You think we'll see him today? The devil? Yeah. I think he doesn't take walk-ins. Okay, it's been about five minutes. The pond is actually starting to expand and get bigger and it's absorbing some of the flavor. I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble because I wanna eat it in its baked form. Oh my God. I'm gonna bake this covered with foil for most of the time, um, mainly because I want it to steam. I don't want it to lose any of the liquid. And then I'll uncover it at the end and then toast it up in a hotter oven. And I'm gonna loosely cover it. I don't, again, I don't wanna push down on it. So I'm just gonna kind of tent it a little bit. It's totally fine. It's just to prevent the loss of moisture. And now I will put it in the oven. It's a video. <laughs> it has been about 45 minutes. Oh, it's so beautiful. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so the, the steam has basically evenly distributed all the moisture, so now all the panelote on top are nice and soft. So now I'm just gonna put it in, I'm gonna crank the heat up to about 425. I'm gonna watch it, because it's probably gonna go a little bit quicker. It's pretty brown already. It's ready to eat soon. Oh. All right, the moment I've been waiting for. And I have to admit something, so, Stuffings actually look their best right after they come out of the oven. So we pulled it out of the oven. We shot all the beauty. So I actually already scooped out a plate. So anyway, I'm really excited because it's actually, we had enough wait time that I can eat it without burning myself. So I'm really excited. And that is the pan de lote dressing. I guess I need a spoon. <laughs> it has like hints of Thanksgiving smell, but like the corn is so pronounced, it actually tastes more like a corn casserole, or it smelled more like a corn casserole than, uh, than a Thanksgiving dressing, but I'm not mad at that at all. All right, so I want lots of chorizo and a little bit of totopo and some chiles. Mm. Oh my God, it's so good. The pan de lote, it still has a lot of the sweetness, but it absorbs so much of that savory chorizo and uh, the, the serranos and the poblano. It also gave the, the, the whole dressing this beautiful red color, the, uh, um, the chorizo. It's so good, but it, it almost tastes like roasted corn with a little bit of honey. It's like got this really deep caramelly flavor. It's so good, wow. Oh, and I just got a little bit of the burn on the back end. That is, that is honestly the reason why I love sweet heat because you get the sweetness in the beginning and then you finish with this nice warming heat. And even though I put like all three Sonatos in there with all the seeds, it's not like overwhelming. It's just like this really, really nice kind of like, almost like a gingery kind of burn at the very end. I'm gonna go in for one more. Huh. They can cut it out later. Mm. Do you want to taste? Yeah. Misa was very skeptical. I'm chewing. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. You like it? It's really good. You want to take some home? Of course. <laughs> you know I will. Yeah. <laughs> You may or may not, depending on how many people you're feeding for your Thanksgiving dinner, you may have a lot of leftovers. One thing that's actually really yummy, uh, and I think it would be really good with this one because it's a little sweet. If you take the leftover stuffing and if you have a waffle iron, particularly a Belgian waffle iron, and then just like stuff it in there, close the lid and let it go for like five minutes, but you have to check it because it, it'll burn quickly because it's uh, pretty sweet. This will make the most ridiculous waffles ever. Serve it with an egg, maybe a little drizzle of maple syrup over top, but it's pretty sweet so you may not need it. Highly, highly, highly recommend. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope if you want to see more of me, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if there's a recipe that you want me to try or you'd like to see me uh, attempt to make sweet heat, 
just let me know and I will give it a go. And until next time, have an amazing Thanksgiving. I hope you try this dish or some version of it. You will not be upset. See you in about two weeks. I guess the wave is kind of weird. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>